Welcome to Hello English Teacher. Today let's look at the final part of the line by line explanation of the chapter Mother's Day from class 11 English. If you're watching my video for the first time, please subscribe. You can listen to the explanations of chapters from classes 10, 11 and 12 English. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a video. Let's move on to the video now. So we saw that Mrs. Pearson, who is inside Mrs. Fitzroy's body, enters the house because she is nervous and she is also eager to know what is happening inside the house. So Mrs. Pearson, who is actually Mrs. Fitzroy, I have been telling them what they think of him at the club. So she asks him, "What happened to George? What are you talking and all that?" So Mrs. Pearson, who is actually Mrs. Fitzroy, tells Mrs. Pearson that. I have been talking to George and I have been informing him how people at the club regard him and how they make fun of him. So Mrs. Fitzgerald, well, they think a lot of him, don't they? So Mrs. Fitzgerald, who is actually Mrs. Pearson speaking, so she is saying actually they think a high, they think a lot about him and they really respect him, don't they? So she wants to get an answer from Mrs. Pearson, from Mrs. Fitzgerald. So Mrs. Pearson, who is actually Mrs. Fitzgerald is replying, "No, they don't." And now he knows it, and so now she is telling the truth that that Mr. George knows the truth that everybody is not having a high regard for him, but instead they are all making fun of him. So now Mrs. Fitzgerald, who is actually Mrs. Pearson, she is feeling nervous and she is saying, "Oh dear, I wish you hadn't, Mrs. Fitzgerald." So she is inside Mrs. Fitzgerald's body. and she is supposed to be acting like mrs fitzgerald but then when she sees that she is making fun of her husband she is saying that oh dear you should not have told that and by mistake she utters her name mrs fitzgerald so now mrs pearson who is actually mrs fitzgerald says nonsense doing them all a world of good and they'll be eating out of your hands soon you'll see so she feels angry because mrs fitzgerald or mrs pearson has been trying to stop her from talking to george and making fun of him so now she is replying that see i have been doing something good for you and i am trying to make them all regard you but then if you stop me from doing this they are all going to make fun of you and they are going to take advantage of you so now mrs fitzgerald who is mrs pearson is talking i don't think i want them eating out of my hand so she says that she does not want them to take advantage of her so mrs pearson impatiently well whatever you want they'll be doing it all three of them mark my words mrs pearson so she feels very angry because mrs pearson was trying to stop her from doing her work so she is saying if you don't allow me to do my work that is set your people all right then you will have to face the consequences and so she is saying mark my words so george enters gloomily that means very sadly he is entering inside he is unpleasantly surprised when he sees the visitor so he is not happy to see the visitor who is the happy visitor here it is mrs fitzgerald but actually inside she is mrs pearson he moves to the armchair left sits down heavily and gloomily lights his pipe then he looks from mrs pearson to mrs fitzgerald who is regarding him anxiously so he is looking at Mrs. Fitzgerald, who is very anxiously looking at him, we know it because she is actually his wife. But he does not know it. That he also does not know that they have changed personalities. Now George just looked in for a minute. I suppose Mrs. Fitzgerald. So he is asking her. I hope you just came in for a minute to see if everything is fine. Um, Mrs. Fitzgerald, who doesn't know what she is saying? Well, yes, I suppose so, George. so mrs fitzgerald is actually mrs pearson we know that and so she without any thought she immediately says yes it is so george so she calls uh, she does forget that she forgets that she is acting out actually and she talks as if she is really talking to her husband and calls him by the first name so george is aghast so he is shocked then he says george so because he is shocked because the neighbor is calling him by his first name usually they are not supposed to call like that only very close people call each other by the first name so he does not like mrs fitzgerald calling him as george but we know that it is actually mrs pearson inside so 
Mrs. Fitzgerald nervously, oh, I'm sorry. So then she realizes that she has done a mistake and she says, sorry. And so Mrs. Pearson impatiently, what does it matter? Your name is George, isn't it? Who do you think you are? Duke of Edinburgh? So immediately Mrs. Pearson, who is Mrs. Fitzgerald, comes to help Mrs. Fitzgerald. So what she is saying? She is immediately scolding the husband, that is George and telling. So what is wrong if she calls you George? Is your name not George? So who do you think you are? Duke of Edinburgh. So are you the king of Edinburgh? So why should it she not call you by your name George? So George angrily. What's he got to do with it? Just tell me that. And isn't it bad enough without her calling me George? So he's saying, so why are you bringing in the Duke of Edinburgh in this point of time? There's no need to use that person's name here. And he also feels that it is bad that the neighbor is calling him by the first name. No tea, Pompey Ompey Pearson and poor Doris has been crying her eyes out upstairs. Yes, crying her eyes out. And so he is totally confused and worried at the things happening in the house. He is saying that he didn't even get his tea and he also comes to know and he is talking about the name that people call him at the club that is Pompey Ompey Pearson. And he is also saying that Doris that is his daughter has been crying all day because of what is happening in the house and because of the mother's behavior. So Mrs. Fitzgerald wailing. So Mrs. Fitzgerald we know that is Mrs. Pearson. So she cannot, you know, come to terms with what is happening in the house now because everything is like out of her control. So she feels very sad and she starts crying. Oh dear, I ought to have known. And she feels very sorry for changing places. So George is staring at Mrs. Fitzgerald who is actually Mrs. Pearson and she was crying. So he is staring at her and he is angry, annoyed. So what is he telling? You ought to have known. Why ought you have to have known? Nothing to do with you, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Look, we are at sixes and sevens here now. So perhaps you will excuse us. So he is saying, don't cry. It's not about you. We have not told anything about you. We are actually at sixes and sevens means we are totally confused here. And so he is saying that, so you will please excuse us. That means he wants her to leave. He thinks that she is the neighbor. But actually we know that it is Mrs. Pearson inside. So Mrs. Pearson, that is who is actually Mrs. Fitzgerald. Before Mrs. Fitzgerald can reply, I won't excuse you George Pearson. Next time a friend or neighbor comes to see me, just say something when you see her, good evening or how do you do or something. And don't just march in and sit down without a word. It's bad manners. So now Mrs. Pearson, that is who is Mrs. Fitzgerald inside, is actually trying to calm the situation down by trying to make George understand how he has to behave when somebody comes in, especially a neighbor. And she tells him that she has come to see me and you are not supposed to walk in just like that and sit beside her. At least you should have wished her and then made her sitting or something and then you should have sat by her side. So it's bad manners that you never did all this. You just came in and sat down just like that. So she was trying to teach him some good manners. So Mrs. Fitzgerald, who is actually Mrs. Pearson, nervously, no, it's all right, Mrs. Pearson, no, it's all right. We'll have some decent manners in this house or I'll know the reason why. So glaring at George, well, so Mrs. Pearson and Mrs. Fitzgerald immediately speaks out. She's saying that, no, it's all right, I'm not worried and we will definitely have some good manners. And because she already is thinking about her own family, she does not want her family members to be scolded like that by others. So she is trying to come to terms with them and tell them that they are going to behave properly. So George intimidated. Well, what? So because George was surprised because Mrs. Fitzgerald is trying to look at him and talk. So he was wondering why she is looking at me and talking. So Mrs. Pearson taunting him. Why don't you get off to your club? Special night tonight, isn't it? They'll be waiting for you, wanting to have a good laugh. Go on then. Don't disappoint them. So immediately Mrs. Pearson trying to make fun of, taunting means making fun of Mrs. Uh, George. And what is she telling? She's trying to tell him that you have to go to the club tonight because they will really have some good time by making fun of you. So, and she's also telling him not to 
disappoint them because they will be waiting there to have a good laugh. So she wants George to go to the club now. So George now feeling very bitter. He is saying that's right make me look silly in front of her now. So he is telling that now you are trying to make me look funny and silly in front of the neighbor as well. He didn't like his wife telling him like that in front of Mrs. Fitzgerald. Sixes and sevens. Poor Doris has been crying her eyes out, getting the neighbors in to see the fun. So he's saying that you're telling about the confusion and the daughter has been crying and you want the neighbor to see what is happening inside the house. Suddenly losing temper, glaring at Mrs. Pearson and shouting, All right, let her hear. What's the matter with you? Have you gone balmy or what? So immediately he gets angry and then he starts shouting at his wife, that is Mrs. Pearson, but actually we know that it is Mrs. Fitzgerald. So he is asking her, are you alright? Let the neighbor hear whatever she wants. Are you balmy or what? That means are you out of your head? Are you crazy or what? So Mrs. Pearson jumping up savagely. So by listening Mr. George speaking in a rough manner, in a rude manner, she gets up angrily. Savagely means in an angry manner. If you shout at me like that George Pearson, I will slap your big fat silly face. So she says that if you are shouting like this, I don't mind slapping you on your face as well. So she was not calm and meek like Mrs. Pearson. We know that this is Mrs. Fitzgerald and she is very bold and strong and this is the way she talks. So she does not want this angry husband to talk to her like that and she was ready to react also. So Mrs. Fitzgerald who is Mrs. Pearson is moaning. That means she is crying and saying oh no 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 because she didn't want this fight kind of fight to happen there. Please Mrs. Fitzgerald. So Mrs. Pearson sits and unknowingly she calls Mrs. Fitz Fitzgerald instead of calling Mrs. Pearson and then Mrs. Pearson sits. So George is there staring bewildered because he is looking confused because he don't know what is happening there and the two ladies are also there. Either I am off my chump or you two are. So what is off my chump means mad. So he is saying either I am mad or both of you are mad. How do you mean no no please Mrs. Fitzgerald. So what is he is telling? He is asking Mrs. Fitzgerald why are you saying no 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 what is the matter? And look you are Mrs. Fitzgerald so why are you telling yourself to stop when you are not doing anything? So he is asking her you are Mrs. Fitzgerald you are our neighbor and you didn't do anything. So why are you trying to tell her to stop? First of all, why are you telling yourself to stop? So you must actually ask her to stop. That means he wants his wife Mrs. Pearson to stop talking. So tell her to stop then there will be some sense in it staring at Mrs. Pearson. I think you must be tiddly. So he is saying Mrs. Fitzgerald to tell his wife to stop talking and so he is looking at his wife. So Mrs. Pearson is his wife but we know that it is actually Mrs. the bold personality Mrs. Fitzgerald inside. So he is saying I think you must be tiddly. Tiddly means somebody who is drunk because he can't believe that she is behaving in a very strange manner. So he wants her to stop talking. So now Mrs. Pearson st starting up savagely. Say that again George Pearson. So because he says that she is looking like a drunk person. She wants him to repeat it. So George intimidated. All right, all right. Doris enters left, looking miserable. She is in. She is still wearing the wrap. Mrs. Pearson sits on the settee. So George immediately looks to the other side when he sees his daughter is entering the room. She is still wearing the wrap. She has not changed the dress. And then Mrs. Pearson sits on the settee. So what's the meaning of intimidated? Feeling frightened that somebody is looking at you. So George was very aware that something is happening and that people is looking at what he is doing. So Mrs. Fitzgerald, hello Doris dear. So we know that Mrs. Fitzgerald is Mrs. Pearson. So she is calling over to her daughter Doris miserably. Hello Mrs. Fitzgerald. So she just wishes the neighbor. And then she continues to speak. I thought you were going out with Charlie Spence tonight Doris annoyed. What's that to do with you? So this lady Mrs. Fitzgerald who is actually her mother is asking her. I thought that you are going out tonight. So immediately Doris is very angry and she is saying why are you bothered about that? So Mrs. Pearson stop that. So Mrs. Pearson who is Mrs. Fitzgerald does not want the daughter 
to speak in that manner she was speaking in a very rude manner to the neighbor so mrs fitzgerald nervously no it's all right so she feels that it is all right because she is used to all that so now mrs pearson severely it isn't all right i won't have a daughter of mine talking to anybody like that now answer mrs fitzgerald properly doris go and or go upstairs again so she is telling her daughter to answer properly and not talk not to talk in a rude way like this so she is telling her either you answer properly or get out of here or go upstairs so mrs fitzgerald wants the daughter to behave properly so immediately doris looks wonderingly at her father because she is wondering what the father is going to do now and george in despair that means he is also feeling very sad and he says don't look at me i give it up i just give it up so he is saying that he cannot do anything about the situation so mrs pearson fiercely well answer her doris sulkily i was going out with charlie spence tonight but now i have called it off so now mrs pearson who is mrs fitzgerald is telling doris to answer the neighbor very in a very polite manner so she sulkily means with a mood off she is not in a good mood so she replies that she was actually planning to go out with charlie spence but then she has called that meeting off so mrs fitzgerald oh what a pity dear why have you so this mrs fitzgerald who is actually the mother mrs pearson wants to know the reason why she has called the meeting off so immediately doris replies with a flash of temperaments she is slightly angry because if you must know my mother's been going on at me making me feel miserable and saying she got buck teeth and is half witted so she's saying okay you are the neighbor but still i'll tell you what happened my mother is making me feel sad and she is making fun of charlie spence saying that he is half witted that means he is a senseless guy and he has buck teeth so making fun of his teeth as well so immediately mrs fitzgerald who is the mother says rather bolder to mrs pearson oh you shouldn't have said that so she is looking at the other lady that is mrs pearson and saying that you shouldn't have said that you shouldn't have made fun of her like that so mrs pearson mrs fitzgerald i'll manage my family you manage yours so mrs pearson who is actually mrs fitzgerald immediately tells the neighbor that you don't have to interfere in my family matters because i will take care of my family and you can take care of your family george grimly ticking her off now are you annie so george is listening to this conversation and he is asking her that are you trying to make her also angry so immediately mrs pearson replies even more grimly means even more seriously what does she say they are waiting for you at the club george don't forget and don't you start crying again doris so she is trying to remind him to go to the club once again and she is also telling doris not to cry so mrs fitzgerald getting up with a sudden decision that's enough quite enough so mrs fitzgerald is mrs pearson we know that she has actually changed personality because she wants her friend to set her family members right and now she feels that everything is enough and she can't bear to see more so george and doris doris stare at her bewildered so both of them are wondering why is she speaking like that why is she saying that everything is enough so to george and uh, doris now listen you two i want to have a private talk with mrs fitz she corrects herself hastily so she looks at these two people that is mrs pearson who is actually mrs fitzgerald looks at these two george and doris and tells them that she wants to have a word with mrs fitz then she corrects and says i want to talk to mrs pearson so i'll be obliged if you two leave us alone for a few minutes so she wants them to go out so i'll let you know when we have finished go on please i promise you that you won't regret it there's something here that only i can deal with so she is telling them that please go out i'll promise you that you will not regret and something good is going to happen and i can manage everything well and so george stands up and he says i'm glad somebody can cause i can come on doris so he is saying that he is happy because somebody is going to help him and he says that he is helpless and he can't do anything about it so he calls doris and both of them go out so as they go mrs fitzgerald moves on left to a small table and sits 
she eagerly beckons mrs pearson to do the same thing so mrs fitzgerald who is actually mrs pearson goes and sits near mrs pearson who is actually mrs fitzgerald and she wants the same thing to happen again that is the magic spell to be said again because she wants to get back into her original personality mrs fitzgerald mrs fitzgerald we must change back now we must really mrs pearson rising why so when she says that we must change back immediately mrs pearson who is actually mrs fitzgerald wants to know why she wants to change back so now mrs fitzgerald says because this thing has gone far enough i can see they're all miserable and i can't bear it so mrs pearson who is inside mrs fitzgerald's body is saying that i think this is too much and everybody is miserable that means they're all feeling really sad and they're not able to manage the situation and i too cannot bear it so i really need to get back my own personality let us exchange now so now mrs pearson is saying a bit more of the same would do them good that means she wants to continue for some more time and give them some good dose so that they'll all learn how to regard the mother so making a great difference already so she's saying that i've already done something good and there is a little bit change in all of them so she moves to the right of the table and sits mrs fitzgerald no i can't stand any more of it i really can't we must change back hurry up please mrs fitzgerald so mrs pearson says that no i cannot see this any longer please change immediately so they both sit mrs pearson well if you insist yes i do please please so mrs pearson says yes i want to be changed immediately okay so she stretches her hands across the table eagerly mrs pearson takes them mrs pearson quiet now relax so mrs pearson and mrs fitzgerald stare at each other muttering exactly as before ashtara dam ashtara lam ashtara lam dam bona so they carry out the same actions before going lax then coming back to life but this time of course they both become proper personalities so once again they both sit they hold hands and then she utters the magic spell then for some time they become lax that means their bodies become slightly you know relaxed and then they gain life and they come back to their original personalities so mrs fitzgerald ah well i enjoyed that mrs pearson i didn't so mrs fitzgerald who is now mrs real fitzgerald says that she enjoyed that because she was able to bring about some change but mrs pearson says she was not happy because she did not want to see her family members feel miserable so mrs fitzgerald well you ought to have done now listen mrs pearson don't go soft of them again else it'll all have been wasted so now she is giving her a piece of advice telling her don't be soft on your family members now because otherwise again they will sit on your head or take advantage of you, on you or whatever efforts we have taken will also be wasted so you have to be strict with them so mrs pearson says i'll try not to mrs fitzgerald so she promises the friend that she will try to be strict with them so now mrs fitzgerald they don't they have not had long as i like to have given them another hour or two rough treatment might have made it certain so she is saying that i think we could have had some more time this was a shorter time maybe one more hour would have really made them realize the mistakes they have been doing so mrs pearson i am sure they'll do better now though i don't know how i'm going to explain so she feels that they're all changed now and they'll be doing better and mrs fitzgerald severely that means in a serious manner don't you start any explaining or apologizing or you're done for so she's saying you don't now try to explain them again because then everything is fine now so there is no need to re tell them everything again so mrs pearson with spirit so she's feeling lively again it's all right for you mrs fitzgerald after all they aren't your husband and children so she says that it for you it is looking fine because it's not your children it's not your husband but for me i feel really sad for having dealt with them in that manner because they are feeling really miserable so now mrs fitzgerald in a very impressive manner she speaks now you listen to me you admitted yourself you were spoiling them and they didn't appreciate you any apologies any explanations and you'll be straight back where you were so she's saying now you only told me that your people are not 
uh, regarding you whatever work you do they are not accepting they are not appreciating and it is you who were spoiling them all these days so once again if you start trying to explain everything then again they will start or they will go back to their previous behavior so i am warning you dear just give them a look a tone of voice now and again to suggest you might be tough with them if you want it to be and it ought to work anyhow we can test it so she is saying that you have to give them a look now and then so that they will understand that mother is serious and you cannot have any kind of fun with her or you cannot take her for granted so they will know the importance of you so she is saying anyway let's test it once as to how they are going to behave now Pearson, how Mrs. Fitzgerald? Well, what's it you like them to do? What that they don't stop at home for once? So Mrs. Pearson, yes, give me a hand with the supper. So immediately she is asking, how is that we are going to test them? So immediately Mrs. Fitzgerald asks, her, what is that you want them to do? And uh, do you want them to stay at home and not go out? So immediately Mrs. Pearson says, yes, I want them to help me with the supper. So what is supper? The night meal. So, Mrs. Fitzgerald, anything you like them to do that you enjoy, whether they do or not. So, she is saying, you can also tell them that whatever you want, and whether they enjoy or not, you don't have to bother. You just have to tell them. So, immediately, Mrs. Pearson hesitating. Well, yes, I like a nice game of rummy, but of course, I hardly ever have one except at Christmas. So, the mother has not been having any kind of entertainment at all. So, she says, she likes to play a game of rummy, which she hardly plays only once during Christmas time. Immediately, Mrs. Fitzgerald gets up. That will do then. She moves towards the door, then turns. But remember, keep firm or you have had it. So, she goes out and while going out, she is again telling her to be firm and not to move or not to be, you know, lax. She opens the door calling. Hoy, you can come in now. So, coming away from the door and moving right slightly. So, she calls everybody inside quietly. But remember, remember a firm hand. So, she keeps reminding Mrs. Pearson to be very firm and not very lax. So, George, Doris and Cyril file in through the doorway looking apprehensively at Mrs. Pearson. So, they are very apprehensive means they are very frightened. They, know, they don't know how the mother is going to behave. I am just off to let you enjoy yourself. And so she is telling them that she is going home and she wants them all to enjoy. The family looks anxiously at Mrs. Pearson who smiles much relieved they smile back. So the family enters that is George and his two children. So they look at the mother that is Mrs. Pearson and they are afraid whether she will behave in a strange manner. But then she smiles and so they smile back they feel relieved. So Doris anxiously yes mother. Mrs. Pearson smiling. See that you don't want to go out. I'll tell you what I thought we'd do. So, Mrs. Pearson tells her. So, I know that you're not going out today. So, let me tell you what to do. So, Mrs. Fitzgerald giving a final warning. Remember. So, again she's telling her friend to remember to be firm. So, Mrs. Pearson nodding then looking sharply at the family. No objections I hope. So, again in a firm manner she's speaking. I hope you have no objections to whatever I say. So, George is speaking in a very humble manner. No, mother, whatever you say. So, he is telling, yes, we will do whatever you say because he does not want his wife to behave in a strange manner. So, Mrs. Pearson smiling. I thought we'd have a nice family game of Rami. The new children could get the supper ready while I have a talk with your father. So, she told the family that she wants to have a nice game of Rami and she wants the children to get the supper ready. And she also wants to have a talk with her husband, that is George. So, George firmly suits me. He looks challengingly at the children. What about you two? So, George is also happy and he says, yes, it suits me. I am also ready with that. And he looks challengingly at the children because he was not sure whether they will be able to prepare this supper or not. So, he is asking them, what about you two? So, Cyril hastily, yes, that is all right. Doris also in a hesitating manner says, well, I, Mrs. Pearson, sharply, what? Speak up. So, she once again becomes very firm and says, what is it? What is that you want? What's your opinion? Better speak up. So, she becomes very stern when she sees that the girl is hesitating a little bit. So, Doris hastily, that means quickly, she says, oh, I think it would be lovely, Mrs. Pearson, smiling. 
good bye mrs fitzgerald come again soon so the daughter readily agrees to do whatever the mother has said that is to get the supper ready so she waits good bye to the friend and asks her to visit later so mrs fitzgerald says yes dear night all have a nice time so she says good night and leaves and she wants everybody to have a nice time so mrs fitzgerald exits left and the family cluster round mother as the curtain falls so the family members are sitting together and happy now and relieved that the mother is all right so with the help of mrs fitzgerald the family members realize the importance of mother and also realize the importance of treating her in a proper manner so i hope you like this video for more informative videos do subscribe to hello english teacher like share and give your valuable comments below thank you for watching